Once the name is more than six inches off the centre line, or if the windward shroud goes loose, then it's time for a rig change. Okay, Peter, shrouds are too loose. We're gonna have to go for a rig change. All right, I'll go in and do it. You take okay. the main. Got it. I'll stay on the way. Right, right for this rig in, change, then. I keep the um, kicker on and the Cunningham on, because it helps the induce some slack into the lured shroud. This five to one purchase system, which we call the on the water boat breaker, into my lower plate, just clips in with a fast pin, lift up my cover, and I put it on my lured trapeze wire. Pull the tension, and yeah, literally just it. give it some salad, and then I've got some slack in my shroud, and I can move it down half a hole. Which is what I'm going to do. So down it goes. And then I'm going to move my cap down half a hole as well. And then I release the tension and job done. Just going to do the other side now, Peter. Ready for attack? Yeah, ready. Right, let's go. Say when. Yeah, under control. Go on, go for it. Right, I'm just clipping in the boat breaker again into this the other side that I haven't done yet. Clip it onto the trapeze wire, take the slack. I'm trying to keep the boat in control. And then just heave on the rig tension. If my helmsman during this whole process suddenly hits a big gust, he will call my weight and I can wait, just wait, leave it wait. all. There we go, classic That's example. It. Not a problem though. And I go back to what I'm doing. None of it can fall overboard, it's all safe. Moved the shroud down half a hole now I have. Now I'm moving the cap down half a hole. Cap's located. All made safe, free off all this. Remove the boat breaker. Pull the cover back over the shroud. Ready to go sailing again on the new setting. No one enjoys sailing in three knots of breeze, but sometimes that's exactly what we have to do. The trouble with these boats is that the wide planing area around the transom can become a real hindrance. Just look at all that drag. That can be removed by moving the crew weight as far forward as possible. This changes the wetted area of the hull and lifts the transom clear of the water. Changing crew positions in light airs is about being deliberate and subtle. Peter moves forward along the centre line so as not to affect the boat balance and then Alistair will add a small amount of lured heel as he moves forward in the boat. This allows him to rock the boat flat as he takes up his new position and get some extra speed out of the manoeuvre. Going back to our transom, we can see all that drag has now been removed, shown by a clear stream of water behind the boat. Peter might look miserable up the front of the boat, but it keeps his weight on the centre line and allows the helm to control all the balance. Alistair's on his toes, ready to respond to any change of pressure without disturbing the boat too much. Tacking in less than six knots is about using the rudder as little as possible, aiding the turn with just the right amount of body movement to control the heel. Be careful when settling down on the new tack, as any movement here will kill the momentum. Lured heel will help use our outboard theory to start the turn without the rudder. Alistair then steps behind the main sheet and heels the boat to windward for crossing sides and popping the battens. He can then change hands and move forward in the boat, taking up his new position and sailing on the new tack. As the breeze increases, Peter helps the roll while remaining in front of the mast. The skill comes from knowing how much weight will be required coming out of the tack to bring the boat upright at the correct speed. Moving through the slot, Peter can grab hold of the windward lower and swing off this to bring the boat flat coming out of the tack. He then slides back in to his normal upwind position. Watch Alistair pause on the windward gunnel before moving into the boat. 
This adds the roll we're after and allows him to cross to the high side and pop the battens. Once settled, he then reaches for the hook and clips on. Watch the amount of rudder used through the tack. It follows the boat rather than the other way around. Remember, slow entry, fast exit. The fact there's no transom weight reinforces the weight was kept forward through the whole manoeuvre. To finish this segment off, let's look at some other light wind manoeuvres. Here Peter moves back through the lowers before grabbing the halyard and going for the hoist. The job for the helm is to sail as low as possible, keeping his weight on the centre line. Once set, the crew can move forward to the bow and if necessary, grab the downhaul and free it off so it doesn't affect the shape of the kite. Setting up for the jibe, the crew takes hold of the new sheet and gets on his feet. He can then jibe the spinnaker in front of the mast, keeping the weight forward and the transom out of the water. Once set, ease the spinnaker for the new course and then start feeding information back to the helm about the amount of pressure in the sheet. The signal for the helm that the crew is ready for the jibe is when he's got the new sheet in his hand. Alistair can then steer into the jibe and then hit the handle to pop the battens on the new side. He then moves back into the boat, sailing on the new downwind course. For the drop, the crew hands a sheet to the helm and then bags the kite from in front of the mast. Be sure to take up the slack in the downhaul so the foot is brought clear of the water first of all. Once that's in the chute, the crew can then go for the jib ready to harden up. Through the whole manoeuvre, there's been virtually no movement, which means no loss in momentum. Bring the sheet on slowly, and then take your time to get the right setting. Once that's done, you can think about tidying the sheets up in the boat. Now that's enough of light winds, let's get back to the windy stuff. <laughs>